All right, meanwhile, the topic of uh, in unequal justice for black people reminds us of one of the most notorious hate crimes in our country's history. Emmett Till was a 14-year-old black boy who was kidnapped, tortured, and killed for what some thought was whistling in a white woman. That woman lied. BNC's Eric Cox takes a look back at the crime that marked a turning point in the civil rights movement. It was 65 years ago when Emmett Till traveled from his home in Chicago to the Jim Crow South, visiting relatives in the Mississippi Delta region. During the trip, the 14-year-old was abducted and brutally lynched after being accused of flirting with a white woman outside a grocery store. His story, one of many examples of the frightening racism African Americans endured. I was born the day before Emmett was murdered. Naomi Davis is CEO and founder of Blacks and Green, a nonprofit organization based in Chicago. Davis, like countless other black people, was raised realizing the weight of Till's murder. So when the opportunity came to purchase the two flags, that he and his mother, Mammy Till Mobley, called home, she couldn't pass it up. The property, a shadow of its former self, slipping into disrepair during decades of neglect, accumulating five pages of building code violations. Davis and her nonprofit now inheriting that disrepair and doing so gladly. No matter what condition the property was in, we were going to buy it. And buy it they did, even paying a premium for the property, $30,000 more than comparable sales in the area. But that fact doesn't bother Davis, as she dreams of transforming Till's childhood home into a pilgrimage site, one that will tell his tale and the story of the Great Migration. When over 6 million African Americans, including her family, moved away from the rural South. As the rising from the ashes... Uh, of a place left for dead. It's so exciting to close my eyes and imagine that. A treasure sitting in plain sight, but not being recognized. Davis, hoping the history that will one day fill this house will also spearhead a new beginning for the surrounding community. We see a thriving walk to work, walk to shop, walk to learn, walk to play village with the Till Mobley House at the spiritual epicenter. Still one of the biggest travesties of racial injustice uh, in this country's history. So today, uh, Emmett Till's cousin is turning her and her family's pain into a mission to help others. Deborah Watts is the co-founder of the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, and uh, Deborah is joining us this morning to talk all about that and much more. Good morning, Deborah. Happy to have you on the show. But, you know, it, it's agonizing, obviously, for uh, any family uh, of mm -hmm. racial injustice in this country. We heard from the Wright family yesterday, we heard their pain, but for your family, it's been 66 years, and still there's been no justice, no one's gone to jail for this. What's it been like as the years have gone by? Yes, well, we have been on this mission uh, after Mimi Till Mobley passed and its mother. Uh, since 2005, we promised her that we would not um, let his death be in vain. And with that, it has been an uphill battle because we have been uh, seeking justice. We have been um, demanding justice. We have been working on policies on a national level, local level, uh, to try to bring attention to this case. You know, it was reactivated actually in uh, 2017 after Carolyn Bryant mm -hmm. Donham supposedly recanted her story, which she actually did not. And I'll, I'll just tell you this, that Emmett did whistle. And our uh, cousins uh, and, and the Wright family and those that were there uh, admit that Emmett did whistle. But we are at a point now where we want to demand justice. We have a petition that we have put out that is uh, demanding that Carolyn Bryant Dunham be charged as an accomplice in the kidnapping and murder of Emmett Lewis Till. And that, um, is something that we have to push forward. Uh, the other interesting thing is that Dwayne Richardson, which is the DA in Mississippi, uh, has this case on his desk. It's in his hands right now. The Department of Justice, FBI, have done their investigation. The evidence has already been laid out. It was laid out actually in 2004. And uh, we're still waiting for answers. Uh, we're not getting any answers. And we're hoping that with 
um, the platforms that you have and others have allowed us to speak on will help to mm -hmm. uh, bring some attention, bring more attention to his case. So Mike asked you how, how your family's been doing after all these years of this mm -hmm. open-ended, disgusting legacy. It's also a powerful legacy mm -hmm. in the way yes. uh, that the matriarch, right? Emmett's mother handled this. Mm -hmm. But I want right. to stay with what you want here, the co-conspirator to face mm -hmm. justice. She gave an interview, if we're to believe everything in it, to a Duke University professor, I think you referenced it, um, where she talked about what wasn't true. The menacing, sexually crude behavior didn't happen. Um, and I wonder mm. if there's anger still after all of these decades that a white woman of privilege has been allowed to move on and live her life as she sees fit after the horror that was done to this child. Um, well, I'll tell you, there's more determination than anger. It's a righteous indignation. Mm -hmm. And it is a, mm -hmm. uh, a battle that we're willing to take on. And we are doing that. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, we understand compassion. We have empathy uh, for Carolyn Bryant Donham as she moves on in her life. But Carolyn needs to answer for her deeds. Yeah. Carolyn Bryant Donham did not recant her story to that professor. She has, has actually maintained that Emmett grabbed her and accosted her and they sexual advances towards her. Has, her family has come out and denied uh, everything that's in his book that he has identified. Mm -hmm. So we want her to stand up uh, and, and to, you know, provide truth and be held accountable. Um, we want justice for Emmett Till and we're not getting it. And we believe Dwayne Richardson uh, has this in his hands right now. And we want him to push this case forward. He has the evidence that's needed. And we want to make sure that Carolyn Bryant Donham has an opportunity to answer. So, of course, we have an emotional battle. Of course, we have uh, some disappointments, but we're determined. You know, I'm standing on the shoulders of Mamie Till Mobley, who, as you saw, and as everyone has witnessed, she turned yeah. her anger, her disappointment into Ugh. purpose and into, mm -hmm. into power. Um, so I'm mm -hmm. standing on her shoulders. She's my shero. And so I have nothing mm -hmm. else but to move forward with the promises that I made to her, along with my family members as well. Um, and with the work that we're doing with the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, we're pouring into the lives of young people. We're um, teaching, you know, we're sharing the story, but we're also pushing for justice as well. You know, we uh, push policy as well. So we're doing everything that's in that full spectrum of justice. That's how we define it. We're even working with students mm -hmm. at uh, in New York uh, University, CUNY, uh, also uh, yeah. African-American studies students at Georgia State University. We have some things mm -hmm. in store that we think will wake mm -hmm. up America, wake up Dwayne Richardson, Carolyn Bryan, and hopefully uh, she'll be brought to justice. Yeah, well, mm. we want to know Let's everything. So. We want to know your blueprint mm. for it. We want to know exactly what we can do, the exact call to action so that we can be with you um, and support you in this. We also want you to come back um, whenever you can. Um, but, but before we let you go, tell us exactly what you need people who are watching this right now to do. Yeah, thank you. Well, we need people to wake up, pay attention, and to understand that the past is not past. Emmett's case is not mm -hmm. an old case. It is still an open murder case, but it has been for mm -hmm. the last 66 years. We need them to sign on to a petition that we currently have. They need to text Emmett to 243-725. They need to call Dwayne Richardson's office and make sure that he and all authorities, even from the top levels of our government, the president of the United States, our vice president of the United States, along with our attorney general, 
and the Attorney General in the state of Mississippi. Mississippi mm -hmm. needs to answer to this. They also need to follow us on our social media, follow our journey mm -hmm. as well. Even though I know that that may not seem as powerful to others, but it is important mm -hmm. for us. Also open the doors to platforms to allow us an opportunity to speak out, uh, to, to mm -hmm. share what our journey is and some of the steps that we're taking. Uh, I'll tell you, this is, there's really no blueprint for this. I'm glad you asked that we would think that there would be after 66 years, mm -hmm. but we're still moving forward mm -hmm. and to lift up the names and the other right. families that are suffering yes. just like us. Do you know that there are 150 other names that the Department of Justice has that are part of the Unsolved Civil Rights Crimes Act that is in the name of Emmett Till? We still oh, have that on the yes. books. Those the families, the families are still out there and I'll be sure, and you know, I'm working with some of those families as well. But let me tell you, please exhale, but also say a prayer for us and also take action. Mm -hmm. There are a number of things that you mm -hmm. can do, and there are a number of things that we probably don't have every answer, but we may be missing something. Let us know if mm -hmm. there's some small thing, uh, big thing, uh, anything is, is a big thing for us. Um, I was fortunate enough to join the George Floyd family uh, just a few days ago, oh, wow. along with Dante mm -hmm. Wright's family. And so mm -hmm. stand with us in solidarity you're part of our family too. So stand with us in solidarity as we move this forward. If we get justice for Emmett Till, we're gonna begin a healing process for the, our country. Yeah. Also, yeah. we are pushing forward for things that empower the other families, like mm -hmm. getting the right resources from a legal perspective, a marketing perspective, PR mm -hmm. perspective, healing. There's still mm -hmm. trauma you all, there's still generational Absolutely. pain that our families suffer today yes. so there's there's yeah. a lot and um it's a it's a burden that i'm willing to carry uh, empowered well, empowered by mamie to mobley and uh empowered by your questions your concerns as well so i appreciate i just truly appreciate and so grateful for this opportunity yeah. no we, we appreciate, appreciate you. you more yeah, we're going to yes, walk with you. What you're doing. Exhale, pray, you. action. We got Absolutely. it. And we want Thank those 150 you. names. Let's highlight them all. Yes. Um, when yes. Emmett gets justice. That's when. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, mm -hmm. Deborah Watts. Your special uh, lady, you. your family is in our prayers. And uh, we want you to come back. We do with the best news. Justice has been served. Start your day. We'll be right back. <laughs>